tomorrow. Uh, it's down at the right place uh, on Gregory Street. Or right Street, I mean, uh, at the uh, Methodist Church. Uh, the first lecture is going to be on the history of early photography in Pensacola from the 1840s to the 1900s. And then two weeks after that, I'm going to just talk about how photography shaped the American Civil War and how important photography was in the war and the effect that it had. So those will be two actually photography related topics. It's open to the public. Uh, you can go on my, my uh, Facebook page, Norm Haynes uh, Facebook, and I usually post what the lectures are if you can't find it on the Pensacola Heritage Foundation uh, webpage. And you, if you want lunch, it's $10. You have to uh, reserve it, but you don't have to have lunch. You can come a little before noon, and from 12 to 1, we lecture. Uh, second announcement, I brought some door prizes. Uh, if you all, make sure you all got a, one raffle ticket each. Uh, I brought the 14 syllabuses I use when I teach photography on each of the different topics. And there's also a book on uh, a general book of photography there. Uh, it's especially good for a beginner photography. Uh, I really did that to make sure you all stay. Uh, <laughs> you got to be here to win. So, All right. Critiquing is not without its problems. Uh, obviously, I get on thin ice sometimes because it's a delicate issue. You're very proud of your photographs, and all of you are, are photographers and artists, and you all do an incredible work. So to have someone stand up and say you could have done it better is, is a little bit uh, difficult. And Socrates went around criticizing others, and they fed him hemlock. So. <laughs> I understand there's a risk in what we're doing. Let's start with this one. Uh, this is an amazing photograph. Uh, and that's a, an important topic uh, because it's really, you'll see what makes photographs. It's not even the light to light is important, but shadows are just as important in making a wild photo photograph. You hear all the time that you got to get up at sunrise. You, you have to stay out late you know, to get great pictures. Here's one taken probably in the middle of the day, but it's perfect. The light should be appropriate for the subjects. And now we're looking at the an African desert. Uh, it makes us feel hot to take that picture in the, in the middle of the day. There's nice bright lights of the sun and the dark shadows. It is perfect for the subject. In addition, the composition is incredible. We talk about triangulation uh, on the subjects and the, the posing, and I don't know if these were posed, if it was natural, it's amazing because uh, they, they created what is an ideal pose for the subjects. Uh, it just draws you in, uh, great composition, perfect lighting, great focus. Uh, uh, it, it's just a, a wonderful picture. I hate those because I can't criticize them. Okay. This is another very interesting picture. I studied this for a long time and it drew me in and I liked it, but there was just something about it that I thought it could be better. So I asked the photographer to send me the original. Obviously, that's been posterized and before. Okay. Uh, let's get a little. I have to move around just a little bit. Uh, it was posterized, so he sent me this, and I worked with it a little bit, and I did this. And the reason I did is because the message to me is lost when you do all the art. And, and there's a, a time when the posterizing and uh, the painterly effect is, in, is, is great. What I liked about this, look at the message. Here is rich, beautiful, white America looking down their nose at a homeless man sitting below. And what's he looking at is his dog. It just has so many messages in there that I thought it was lost when you do the other. So sometimes you have to think about what is the message? What do you want to portray in the picture? But I think it's, it's composition and the eye of the photographer is incredible to pick this up. And by emphasizing the, the sign a little bit below and, and just that both of them looking down on something, uh, I think it just has wonderful potential. And 
pictures that tell stories like this uh, do well, uh, and they do well in pop. Uh, they're the kind of pictures people want to keep looking at. Here's another great picture. Uh, again, done in the middle of the day, I was bright light. It's not very often when we say a, a white sky really enhances a picture, but here's a perfect weather day for this picture. Uh, a blue sky would not have worked with it. That, that white sky is just perfect. And then the two guys wear blue shirts that just complement. I mean, this person wants to set this thing up for a It's in focus. This, these things are not moving slowly. So if somebody knew how to set the camera to create this kind of stop action. Uh, it's in perfect focus. The, the composition is amazing with that white background, the blue framing, both uh, sides of the uh, uh, rails are framing the center that takes you into it. You've got the complementary colors. Uh, again, a wonderful photograph. I studied this one for a long time because I like this technique. I, I like when you look for greater foregrounds and make them enhance the midground or the background. And I looked at it a long time and I said, well, what, what could we do with it? I cropped it a little. Again, these boats aren't really important and the fact that they're white does draw your eye. Now it creates a bit of a unusual format, but there's nothing wrong with that, especially in pop. Don't get locked in that you have to do an 11 by 14 or 8 by 10. Uh, it, it, mats can be expensive. It, learn to use a mat cutter. They're not very expensive and you can cut your own mats or go to Dick Weaver. He's really good at it. Uh, and you can have odd shaped pictures. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. But I like this again because it just helped me. And look at the tying, the mirroring of the colors, uh, the background that sets the stage. Uh, it just, I liked it. Now, there's one other issue. I looked at this. This, I love the ripple effect, especially when you have a boat. Look at this beautiful white line and the, the, uh, the ripples. Now, it bothers me, and what I would have done if I were the artist, I would have gone down and taken an oar or a foot and kicked that boat out and let it drift out free from the dock and then take the picture. Here's one I did in Greece when I was there. It's, it's, what, it, it's a very simple picture, but there's something very relaxing and pleasing about it. Uh, so look for that. Uh, I think the only thing holding this back is that this is a bit distracting, but this is a much better reflection. Uh, I, I just, if, if that boat would have just come out. So sometimes you have to manipulate the scene a little bit. Uh, don't just take it for what's there. Obviously, you talk all the time, you have to change directions. Stand in different places. Sometimes you have to change the, the props a little bit and kick that boat out. I think it could have created a wonderful image. Here's a, a neat close up. Portraits uh, are tough, especially in kids. Uh, and what is lacking in this is the lack of shadows, uh, particularly in children with their small features. Uh, they tend to flatten. If you don't have shadowing on their face, their face becomes flattened. So I, I manipulated it a little bit just to, to give you some idea. It, you could have done the same thing there. Have them turn so that the sun is catching one side of their face. It helps accentuate their features uh, and gives you a much more interesting portrait. Uh, so think about that when you're out there. I mean, there's many, many times I've, I've been walking and when we travel and we come to interesting natives or wherever we are, and I'll have them turn. I'll say, would you come stand over here and let me get your picture? Uh, and you have to think about where's the sun, what you're going to create, but a little shadowing is necessary on portraits uh, to give it, uh, to make the features stand out. And I think it really enhances it. This is a great picture. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of reflections on water are always great. Uh, it's a great stop action, very sharply in focus with a, a nice uh, uh, reflection, which creates this interesting mirror. Uh, you know, I'm a cropper. I, I crop it a little bit, but you know, it's not really necessary. Uh, it's very well done. I think when you're out looking for those, it, it's, it's a 
always look for reflections. Again, you can't go wrong. No matter what you're reflecting in the picture, it will add that pop that you need. Some, this one confuses me. Wow. Um, yeah, obviously it's a great picture, but if you have a photograph that is, is confuses the viewer, it sometimes is, works against you. Now, the only thing I can think of is, is that this bird is sitting in rather shallow water and this alligator underneath came under it or around it and partially blocked the shadow. But you see what it does. It, it's a little confusing uh, to have this superimposed like that. And that's just my personal preference. Uh, uh, I would have liked it much better if that one weren't there. If this alligator maybe was coming here and you had the reflection. But uh, again, think about that. I've had other pictures I've shown you where I say I'm confused. I, I can't sort it out in my mind so that it, it, it detracts, uh, especially if you're getting judged. Great photograph. Uh, this is very well done. You know, I've got to tweak everything. You know, I, 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 I took out couple of leaves that were out of focus so that that would be uh, the foregrounds a little more in focus, the background appropriately out of focus. Uh, just cropping it down again to emphasize this beautiful relationship between the flower and the butterfly. Very well done. I love the brown background that, that complements the, uh, the butterfly colors themselves. Uh, again, a very well done picture. Uh, flamingos are fun to shoot. The nice thing, you don't have to go out for a while. You can find them free to get easy access without bars and plexiglass and things at any zoo or uh, aquarium and places around. And they're fun to photograph because of their shapes and the positions they get in. Uh, and so it's, it's always worth spending some time. This one is a bit overexposed. And that brings us to the subject, when you should always bracket. It, it doesn't, there's no reason not to bracket. Take three pictures of everything you take uh, because your average exposure from the camera may not be the best exposure. And it's always worth shooting in brackets. One, if you do that, you can sometimes process it as an HDR, but also because you may find that the standard is, is not. Now, what I did was I darkened this, over darkened it just to show you the details that, that are lost. Now, when I do that, it makes everything look black and dirty, but if you did it in the camera, it wouldn't, but it brings out details. Here's some other pictures of what I'm talking about. Uh, when you get the proper exposure, you get such great detail, the feathers, you brighten the colors, uh, the same color uh, of the bird. So again, uh, think about the bracketing uh, uh, and think about your exposure uh, when you're doing it. This is another interesting picture. I, I thought it was interesting because it's a two-part picture. It's an ugly part and a beautiful part. There's the ugly part, right? And there's the beautiful part. But you don't want ugliness to detract from beauty. So why not focus on the beauty? Uh, you've got this wonderful background of that forward sweeping wing and this beautiful sharp picture. I just think as a composition, uh, and it's, this is one of those you may as a photographer look at and say, I like it, but there's just something about it. Uh, and I think if you think about dividing your pictures sometimes, what's, what doesn't work? What's ugly? What's, what is not enhancing? And then you can help think about how to prop. Uh, I just think as a judge, this is a perfect picture. Again, it's square. It's okay. It's okay to have square pictures. I have some frame in the house. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to me to do other formats than the usual. Uh, and think about that when you're uh, cropping. Again, exposure here. Again, when you have these real white backgrounds, they are a bit distracting. And one of the goals is to try to not make your background jump out at you, but have it complement, have it be appropriately lit. All I did was darken this. Uh, you see when you do that, it brings out more detail. When you overexpose, you're gonna, by definition, lose detail. And when you have creatures like this with these incredible detail, you wanna bring that out. Uh, again, a background then that doesn't jar you, 
it complements, especially as I darkened it, and the greens are very complementary now in the background with these beautiful uh, uh, complementary colors of red and green. So it's a very well done composed picture. But again, I think the exposure was not quite right in the one that was presented. Here's a very nice picture. Uh, again, I love the background. And I debated about this. I mean, this on one hand shows the bird in sight to in its, in its element and where it is. And you see the whole background and it's so beautifully lit. It's almost like there's a spotlight on the bird itself, uh, which draws your eye right to where you want to be. I tried cropping it and it's just as, as nice. Uh, I think cropping it allows you to see the image of the bird in the nest. And I just love the background colors. Again, complementing the, the, uh, the nest. The bird is just so well done and so well lit, very sharp. Uh, I like it better cropped, but I can understand why uh, you, know, you may want to include the whole scenario. This one really messed up my mind. Uh, I think, and I could be totally wrong, that this is a picture that was artificially blurred. I say that because it's such a weird design, the way this, this falls. And then look here, I couldn't figure this out. Along the same plane, about how that was done. The only way I could figure it out is you use you know, the blur technique in Photoshop and blur the edges, and that can be done. And if it was done, it was done very effectively around the bird. Maybe that's not how it was done. But when you have linear, linear reality, when you have linear lines, when you have geometric lines in the background, they tend to be uh, distracting. Uh, when it's a blur, a blob, ill-defined, then it enhances without distracting. The, the linear nature of whatever this was, whether it was created or was the natural, bothered me. Now, what was very nice is the utilization of the S-curve. We always look for S-curves as part of the composition, and the bird itself is, you know, presents as a very nice S-curve. It's very sharp. I just don't like the background. This is a great picture. This is, comes into negative space. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I think it works beautifully here. Uh, you wouldn't want that bird just sitting in the center. The off-center, it's such a unique picture. I assume the, the wind's blowing up your butt. And, uh, uh, and, but it's such a unique picture. And then this beautiful background of these very subtle blues you imagine the clouds and the blues, either water or the sky in the background. Uh, very well done. And here's an example where negative space, I think, enhances the image rather than bullseyeing uh, the, the bird in the middle. Silhouettes are tricky. If you're going to do a silhouette, the, the silhouette has to be distinct. You can't have overlapping of arms or legs or people or whatever. And this one, I think would have be, been better not as a silhouette. And I know what happened. You probably, this was probably taken far away and blown up and the lighting was, was not good. I don't think it really works well. You have a kind of a silhouetted bird, but not really a silhouetted post. Uh, I tried to lighten it, but I really can. It's a little bit fuzzy. Again, I think it was probably, it didn't have enough of a telephoto type lens and the light wasn't right. But, it's such a beautiful capture otherwise. To have the lizard dangling, you can see the arms, the tail sticking out, uh, the uh, Spanish moss you know, wrapped around the, the thing, the uh, post, the grain in the wood. If this would have been lit from the front, I think it would have been an amazing picture, but it just doesn't quite work for me as a silhouette. I love the yellow-brown combination. This is a, a really a great picture. Again, sometimes we get, want to include the whole. We want to include everything because that's what we're used to seeing. We see everything's in totality. And sometimes we forget that looking at parts. And, uh, this works, doesn't it? I mean, we talk about don't amputate certain parts of animals and why humans, you know. But this works. The, the snout almost resting on the frame on the edge of the picture. Uh, the look, it's a beautiful background, it, it complements, sharp, pack sharp, uh, 
very nice image, a very nice animal picture. It almost makes me feel sad looking at it. <laughs> As some of you know that have been here before, I can't stand crookedness. And here's the thing, it, it, I know there's been this ongoing thing, how much do you manipulate a photo? One of the rules is do what your eyes do. None of you look at buildings and structures and see crookedness. Your brain fixes it for you. So it doesn't make sense for me to say, let my camera, which can't correct it, let it stand. Fix it. You be the brain. And here's an example. It's very subtle, uh, the difference. But look at the, the poles. Uh, it's just a little subtle thing to straighten an image. And I, when I'm judging, I mark down an image that, that isn't corrected. Uh, there's lens aberration. But especially in wide-angle lenses, you're going to get uh, keystoning, where you, you go up, uh, and it's easy to correct. You can correct it in Photoshop, you can correct it with a couple buttons in Photoshop and a quick button in Lightroom. At Lightroom. Uh, you can fix these things. Now, one of the things you want to do is when you're shooting structures, when you're shooting buildings, interiors, allow yourself some margin. You see what happens. This would have been sad if that cut off that edge of the pumpkin. I had, there was just enough room to straighten the poles uh, and not cut it off. So when you're shooting, you've got to allow a little bit. So if I'm shooting outside shooting buildings, I, I allow myself space around it. Now you can also do some things in, in Photoshop. You can go in, and sometimes I've had to do that, and you can expand this and use uh, content aware and kind of make a, a note, make this come out a little bit further so you have some space, but it's much better to do it in the camera when you're shooting. Allow yourself some, some room. It's a great picture. Uh, I love the flow coming down of the pumpkins. Uh, it, it sets the stage. It, it's very well done. This is a nice uh, still life. Uh, and those are hard, hard to do, but look at the difference. Uh, Again, bring it out by just cropping, and that's all I, I did was try to darken it a little bit. It's a little bit overexposed right in the center. I, I think this was probably a light painting. It probably had a floor arrangement and painted it with lights, maybe, or just put a spot on it, possibly. Heck no, that's my iPhone 13. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good iPhone picture. In portrait mode. Uh, so all I did was darken this a little bit, but look just by cropping, uh -huh. how it makes that pop out. The arrangement is beautiful. It's this circular arrangement with the lily coming out of the center. Uh, very well done. And it shows you what you can do with iPhones. It's truly amazing. Now, we used to have a separate contest for iPhones, and after a while we said, this is ridiculous. They're just as good as most other pictures we take. And they're getting more and more pixels and better and better quality. Uh, apparently, the new iPhone 14 is going to be super unbelievable uh, camera effect when it comes out in September, I think. These are always good to shoot, and I like the perspective. Most of the time, people shoot down on these because you're up on a boardwalk or you're on a bridge and you're shooting down, and it's not nearly as effective. This is one where you, you have to get in with the water moccasin and the alligators <laughs> and shoot on their level. Uh, again, I just show you a crop. Get, uh, again, to, to make it pop. It's so well done, uh, beautifully lit, nice background, uh, complimentary, the, the leaves just flow. Uh, I just, again, like it a, a cropped a bit, but it, it's a very well done picture. You can see the reflection so much better when you're close. Look at that. Shooting concerts are not easy. Uh, you have so little control. Uh, when you're shooting a, a, a stage play, when you're shooting an event uh, like these, you have no control. You're at a mercy of the lighting. These people are not holding still, so it's always a difficult challenge, and this is so well done. The little motion here is appropriate, isn't it? It kind of gives you a sense that he's actively playing the guitar. I like that. Uh, you sound I'm all picky about parts being out of focus, but that works. The one thing out of focus is his strumming hand, but it's so well lit. Again, the shadow, enough shadowing to create.
create a depth, uh, a nice background. You know the event uh, shows the event that uh, was being sponsored. Just enough detail of the flag and the, the emblem to kind of put you in the in the perspective. Uh, very nice image. I like these too. These are the kind of pictures that make you think. Somebody had a good eye uh, to see this uh, woman, and I love the fact she's kicked off her shoe. She's barefoot with her shoe here. Uh, she's staring off into the horizon. Uh, There's kind of a mystery about it. She's shrouded, the, the, the shadowing. Uh, I love it in black and white. I, bet this, I think this worked a lot better probably than it did in color. The only thing I did, I don't like lamp posts running out of people's groins. I hate that when that happens. Uh, and I don't want her staring at a lamp post. Let's make it mystery. So what I did was just get rid of those. Now you don't know what she's looking at, and she doesn't have a light post in her groin. So you're, you're, you're not hurting for her. Uh, she's looking off into the distance. So then it conjures up a whole story about the pensive nature. She's kicked off her shoe and she's trying to relax them. Uh, and it's real easy, as you all know, to get rid of structures like that. I mean, that's a 10 second thing just to move that uh, and get rid of it. But I think it, it enhances it. So look at your picture. I mean, literally line by line to see, is there a distracting detail? Is there something that's not part of the story? Uh, if you're a purist and say to me, I don't like that manipulation, so be it. Uh, this is a better picture. And no judge would know you did it, by the way. No judge you could tell that. Remember I talked to you about ugly half and a pretty half? This is another good example. Isn't it? Ugly half? <laughs> yeah. Oops. Pretty half. So let's fix it. This is wonderful. Uh, this is the kind of thing I think a lot of photographers, when you're going out in the field, you forget about. Little details sometimes make the best picture. You know that rowboat that I showed you from uh, Egypt? That was actually not the first picture I took. It was there, but behind it was the, the hills, all the white. You didn't even notice it. When I ended up cropping all that out and going to a rowboat, it made a much better picture. And that's what this is a good eye. And it's fixable at the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. You want to get rid of this. This is very distracting because of the light. And that's easy to do. It's a nice straight line. I don't have to, I didn't mess with this at all. I simply fixed the background so that it was not leaving a little background. You've got to leave and clean it up a little bit. And take the beauty, take the beautiful part, this, this technique, and look at the story. You know exactly what's happening here. Uh, it's a great story, uh, great colors, and it's a great eye to notice these little details as you walk about. I hate this picture because I can't say a damn thing bad about this picture. No. It's probably one of the best uh, you know, Blue Angel pictures I've ever seen. This should be a, sold on a poster in the Navy Museum. Whoever did it, you ought to do that. It is, and we've all done it. We've all been out there. I'm sure you're like me, you take 500 pictures and you hope that 100 of them are focused and it worked. But look what it took. I mean, perfect alignment, one, two, three, four. A perfect sky. Sometimes we, it is nice to have clouds in a Blue Angel show, but not this one. There are your clouds, just perfectly done. Look at how sharp, yeah, you can't even appreciate how Half a sharp leaves. The, you can look at these men, you can practically read their insignia and look at the alignment. It is just one of those perfect images uh, that you go out and you don't just get this by chance. Uh, the, the best little angel pictures I got was the time I went out and spent a week and tried to film their practice on Thursday and Friday so I understood where to stand, where the sun was what the formations were, what I needed to do to try to get a good picture on Friday and Saturday. Uh, and that's what you have to do. Sometimes you have to put in the work. It's not a matter of, hey, let's go out and see him, snap a picture, and oh boy, look what I got. Uh, it takes some work. You know, where's the sun? And where's that, where are they gonna be in that formation in my position? This is incredible. Who was your friend that night? Who did? Is, is that yours? Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was it was a bit bigger. I had a bit more margin. I tried to. Nah, I don't like more margin. This is perfect. 
I think he cropped it just beautifully. Uh, you know, we talk about you don't want to move out of the frame, but that doesn't apply here. Because of the contract, it doesn't apply. You do want them coming across. You can just practically picture them coming out of the frame, right across your frame as you're standing there. It's, it's a wonderful picture. Congratulations. This is interesting. Uh, I don't know the story of what all this is, but it doesn't matter. And this has to do, and I know how it is. When you travel, you can't always pick your time of day. You can't always pick the right time. But if you can plan it, uh, I did bring them. I think I've shown you Mount Rushmore before. And how when I did my research, I said, you got to be at Mount Rushmore at sunrise. It's the only way you can get a good picture of Mount Rushmore. Because that's the only time the sun faces all. Otherwise, you get dark circles under their eyes and they all look tired, or the sun's behind them and they're all dark. Uh, this is like that. You were just here at the wrong time. You've got a cowboy statue that's being lit from the back, and you've got a church uh, structure, uh, building structure that's being lit from the back. The sun's coming here. He's looking away, he's not looking at here. It's just, you're not there at the right time to get the best picture. Uh, what that look like if you sit there? What's that? What that look like if you sit the car around? <laughs> Turn, Turn it around. Well, I still think it'd be, he's looking out of the picture and he's not looking here. I, I pulled some, I couldn't find that statue, but here, if you want to use the building as a background, here's the way to do it. Now, there's an example where the sun's right. The sun is illuminating the statue. You create it and you still have the building that uh, puts it in perspective. And again, it would have happened. Uh, even without direct sunlight, at least it's even on this picture and the sun's hitting the building and it kind of ties it in. The ideal time, I don't know, let's say this is, is morning sun, is to come back at sunset, come around here, get that sun illuminating both and stand so that you're shooting at an angle, seeing him with the building in the background, you know, the, the tower on that side. Of it. But again, we can't always do that. I recognize that. But planning is important. If you're traveling, if you're at any place for a few days, get out your, your apps on the iPhone and look where the sun is going to be and what direction things are facing. And a lot of these great shots aren't just snapshots. They are planned. People thought about what they need to do to get, get the best picture. Here's a, a very nicely illuminated, beautifully sharp picture. It's a bit flat. I mean, it doesn't really tell a story. So again, if you're going to do those, these are the kinds of things you can do. Now, this you may not have been in a position to be able to do this. But if you want to emphasize the barber pole, tell a story with it. Uh, again, this is all out of focus, but it, it's okay. This is the object, and you have an idea that you're in some type of old-fashioned facility. This looks really easy, just enough to show you an old-fashioned barber pole. So again, think about not just a flat object on a wall, but put it in perspective so that you can have a little bit of a story with it. Here's another example. As a judge, I would never rate high any picture of the sun. That's not artist. You're featuring the guy who made the sign, and he's not in the contents. Uh, so I'm not impressed with those unless you use them to tell a story. Like this, you like the sign, put it in context. Put people in it. Now the sign means something. Uh, you have it in context. You have people there. It makes for a much more interesting picture than it had this just been of that sun. Uh, every year at COP, we get pictures of pictures on a wall or a billboard. Remember the Marilyn Monroe? That would not have been near, it wouldn't have worked, a picture of her looking down her nose. Uh, what made that picture was the homeless man sitting in front of her, put it in context. Same thing when you're thinking, when you see a neat sign, camp out. Wait for the people to come. And that's what you have to do. If you're going to really create good pictures, you've got to spend the time very often. Uh, when I was in New York, uh, uh, outside of the Holocaust Museum area, is the firehouse that was the one to respond. And they painted their doors 
and it looks like an American flag with double doors. So I set up shop there and probably for an hour and waited for people to walk by until I could get a picture of something interesting in front of the doors. Uh, and that's what sometimes you have to do. Still lights are tough, obviously, because they're so inanimate. Uh, this is well done. Uh, so, and it's great practice at home to set these up and to uh, uh, light them. It's, it's so well lit. Uh, it's a very well done still light. Uh, it, it's, uh, and it, it's good practice for you at home to kind of set these up and experiment with them. This is one of my favorite pictures. I love framing, number one. I love mirroring and photography. And look what this person has. First of all, you've got the mirroring of the hard branch against the soft shadows, creating kind of an eerie look. But now you have a window, and you can look right through to another window. So you're framing a window and a window. You've got the curtain mirroring the <coughs> other curtain, and you have a lace, the delicate lace pattern mirroring the kind of delicate branch pattern. And then you have this, this horizontal line just works beautifully. Dark branch against the brown and the shadow against the light. It has so many elements in this photograph that makes anyone that looks at it to say, I like that picture. They may not even know why they like it, but they're gonna say, I like this photograph. It is, there's nothing, I mean, I, I can tell you, uh, it's a great look. They stood exactly in the right place. They created enough separation here to mirror the, uh, the curtains. Congratulations, who did this? Oh, wow, thank you. That, that's a beautiful. Is yes. that coming? New Mexico. New Mexico. Frame it. It's a beauty. All right. First of all, we got some crookedness. We got to fix that. So let's fix that. Uh, Yes, this is interesting, but on the other hand, it's not so interesting. Nothing's happened. This is an example that if I were in this bar, I would pull up a chair and I would wait for the barkeep to come. I'd wait for some customers to come. And I think if you put people in that, then this becomes a very nice backdrop with the copper and the colors <laughs> and the old time look to it. Uh, it's a nice picture. It's well done. It's in focus. It's, it's nice lighting. The lighting's appropriate. Uh, straighten it. Uh, but I think sometimes don't be so anxious to think that you have to wait till everybody leaves to get a picture. Sometimes your best pictures are going to be when it, what you see in life is being used. Great night picture. Uh, this has every element that, that you want. Uh, it's a time exposure and just enough to create this nice eerie effect in the water. Uh, it's so difficult not to have the lights just burned out at you. It, 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 the exposure is absolutely perfect. Uh, the colors are complementary. Everything complements the other. Right to the fountain and the edges of the fountain take you right to the, the background. Uh, the background points to the sky with its blue. Uh, the trees frame the picture, so you have framing. Uh, super well done. Uh, night pictures can be challenging, but boy, are they rewarding. Remember in the day, you see more than your camera. At night, your camera sees more than you do. And this is a perfect example of that. You can't see it on that up on the screen, but there's stars in the night sky. Yes, there are stars. And, and there are there points. points. They're, it's yeah. really perfect. I think Dick Weaver took this, right? Am I right, Dick? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Where is that? Tennessee uh, uh, Aquarium. All right. This picture is. Uh, Interesting, and, and symmetry is, is good in a picture. That's one of the compositions we like to look at. It's a little bit okay. Uh, it's, it's interesting, but it's not something you jump up and down with, you know, and say, I really love this. So what I did, I just tweaked it a little bit in, in Photoshop. And <laughs> just a little tweak. And sometimes you can take a bland picture and really make it pop. Uh, it's a good, good lesson, right, Cal? Yep. 
Everyone knows this is Calvin. Calvin yes. has done what every photographer should do, is find a, a niche. Not that that's the only thing you do. But when I teach the class, I tell the students, pick something. My thing is I shoot pictures from inside a window shooting out. And I have a whole collection. Wherever I go, I look for a scene where I can stand inside and my which eventually I want to put them together. The first photograph ever taken was from a photographer's studio in Paris looking out the window at the street. And I've just always been fascinated by that. Calvin does storefronts. And he does them so well. This is just incredible. And sometimes they work in black and white and sometimes they don't. This one really works. Uh, and it, it, is, it, is it chaotic? It's, yeah, it really is. Uh, but what helps? The fact that this light inside it helps draw you in. If that weren't there, it would, I don't think it would be nearly as effective because then you, you quite don't know where to look. But it takes you right through the front doors, doesn't it? Right into the light and everything. You can see right through the store and see it. everything is just as sharp in the back of the store as the side in the front. Uh, everything, look how straight it is. You can just have to use that button. Uh, and it's just a well done, and they're interesting. So he takes store parts. So all of you should find something. Some people do doors, some people do windows, some people, uh, one of the professional photographers who was a judge does numbers. Any time he goes where he sees big numbers, he takes pictures. He has a whole collection of styles of numbers. So I think it just is part of your repertoire. It's, it's important that that's your thing. Everybody knows this. Is, I'm sorry, what? Your grandbabies count? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cats and grandbabies do not count. Uh, now, this one is a little bit problematic. It's a great panorama. And this would be a wonderful picture for an ad. I guess it's Comic Con or Comic Con, whatever it is coming from. Kensicon. Yeah, that for an ad, they ought to use this, this when they're advertising. As a photo itself, if you submitted this in pop, uh, it's a little chaotic. Uh, it's it's interesting. It's a well done panorama, but I think it's more of a commercial picture. It's a picture that ought to be used in an ad, uh, just showing you how popular this place is and these people all dressed up walking around. Again, very well done, sharp front to back, uh, very nice picture. I got three of these. I thought at first they were the same buildings, but they're not. And you can see just subtle little differences of what works and what doesn't work. Uh, this one doesn't quite work. One is crooked, but that can be straight. This sort of is like the hand of death reaching down to grab the building. You know, it, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't enhance. You're hiding the, what's spectacular about buildings like this is the, the, the domes, the cupola, and this is hiding, in fact, that part. It just doesn't work. You got to stand in a little different spot. What I like about this is the framing. Again, I like framing in pictures. I like looking through. The trees create that. Now, the building's in, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's framed, and the dome has come out of the, the, the garden and pointing upward. Uh, this one, likewise, is, is well done. Again, the most important part is is shown with a, a, a little bit of mystery of, uh, of the trees looking for it. The leading line of the sidewalk on the upper left is really well here, placed. Yeah. You've got a nice line that, that, you know, again, a light area that you're going to look at first, draws you down, and then you come to the subject of the picture, which is nicely framed. Here's a, a, a nice picture. This is one I did tweak a little bit in Photoshop. Uh, just enough to make it pop. Uh, it's a little flat. It's a little dull. And I don't know if that's because of uh, how it was processed or just the way it was, but it doesn't take much. And I don't think it, it, it's, it looks natural. And we'll talk about that in a minute and a couple other ones. And I've seen you all have had dialogue about how much can you tweak a landscape. My rule is... <laughs> <clears throat> Never replace a sky if you're a landscape photographer. You're not a landscape photographer if you are replacing skies with your, your stash of skies that you have. That's just me. Uh, 
Beyond that, I think that you can do whatever you want as long as it looks natural. If you're creating unnatural colors or unnatural scenes, then you're going to get marked down. But to me, you know, I know now this was popped a little bit in, in, in Lightroom Photoshop, but to me, it's natural. You bring out the nice blue, and if you've ever seen these glaciers, they are that color of blue. It's the cap, and you see the interior. That's not artificial. The water does look like this. Uh, when the sun hits these mountains, they pop like that. So it's natural. I don't think it, it would, anyone would think that that's been you know, overly manipulated. Uh, you see, you lose, you just lose it here otherwise. So it just a little bit, uh, you don't have to be a total purist sometimes to make your photo uh, just a little bit better. This is another example of the right place at the wrong time. Uh, great foreground. Uh, it's so interesting. You've got all the fishing gear, you've got all sorts around the edge, but you've got a funny looking sky. It's a bit blown out. It's not very dramatic. So this is the kind of thing, if, uh, it's in, uh, it's in a Pensacola. You live here, go back, go back at the right time. What's the right time? Get a sky like that. Mm -hmm. Wait till there's a storm. Wait till or sunset or sun arise or nice cloudy sky so that you have that background because this is very interesting picture. This is the place I would wait, watch the sky and watch the light and go back at the right time of day and get that picture uh, and get the appropriate background that really enhances it rather than kind of being blown out. This is both delightful, I love it, a little weird. The, the phone kind of nauseates me, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> but everything's right about it. Uh, you want to get a good foreground in a picture like this, and this the perspective. I love the fact that it's just a nice tall picture, uh, not the typical framing. Perfect exposure here, beautiful clouds, capture that. That's uh, just enough of the, the sun. Uh, the tree, it brings you down. It's, it's a perfect perspective, and, and uh, you can't criticize anything about the picture. It's why we get foam like that. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe you all can tell us what that, what that creates. I assume that's the foam. Uh, but it's, it's well done. Is this your stand? Yeah. Uh, beautiful picture. It's, it's a great picture. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff Waldorf is the, you know, has, is the one that loves these big foregrounds. He'll enhance whatever, a seashell, or whatever is the foreground. And that's important. Look for good foregrounds that take you in. Uh, a plain beach here would not be nearly as dramatic as this effect, the texturing and so forth. Burned out windows can be a problem. Now, it's not so bad in this. But you have to be careful because it's so bright. Uh, it would have been nice to be a little darker. Again, trying to darker it, darken a JPEG it just makes it look dirty. But it's a little bit overblown here. And I would have exposed this. I love the composition. Uh, somebody again has a great eye uh, for the, the composition here. I would have exposed it a little more from the window. You can work with this. You could have easily uh, lightened this in Lightroom or Photoshop, but uh, uh, you, it's a little bit burned out for a background. It's just a little too distracting. Here again, this, this photographer knows the same thing. A very nice foreground, especially with the little path that's lit that complements the sunset. But what's wrong? This, you've got a totally burned out. out. It's not a pop. Uh, you've got to expose for the brightest spot. You've got to then work with the other. So you can either do it by taking an average exposure and, and toning down a little of this and, and lightening this. You can do it with a split filter uh, on your camera where you filter the top part. Uh, when you take the picture, and so the, it'll come out with equal exposure, or you can work with it a little bit in, in light. Or I just very quickly stuck this on there. It's not how you would want it to look, but to give you the idea, you've got to be able to see the water. 
it's okay to have a circle burned out. You can't, you can't do better than that. In fact, it's nice in, in the orange mid. But you've got to have a little bit of effect here. It's just too burned out and it ruins the, what is otherwise a great photo. Framing, uh, looking through the trees to the sunset, just enough water. Again, this nice lit uh, portion in the front. So again, work with exposure and work on that part. Uh, this is an interesting picture. I turned it around, you know, we talked about, uh, Charlie talked about turning that other one around. We usually talk about it works best if you come from the left into the right, because that's how our eye works, it's how we read. It doesn't always have to be that way. I don't think it makes much difference. Uh, I will tell you, this is a replaced sky. So if it were a pure landscape, I would say uh, it's out. In this case, it's not really a landscape. It's, it's, it's more of an uh, environmental portraiture type picture. Uh, and if you do it well, you know, it's probably going to pass. But again, I would caution you to learn to be at the right time, learn to adjust exposure, learn to use filters appropriately, gradient filters, uh, and then you don't have to do that. Are you, you're knowing that that's a replaced sky because you're looking at the shadows? No, you can see it when you blow it up, you oh, can okay. see the edge of it. Uh, you can tell. You know, from a, if you, the more you blow it up, if you look on the computer, you can see where the edge is. This is interesting. It's a very unique color. It's probably the color it was, but it also, is that going to get it popped? Probably not. Is it a picture some people would like to hang on their walls in abstract because it goes with the colors? Absolutely. It's beautiful colors. It's a beautiful abstract. It's not a picture necessarily that's going to get in pop, but there's ways you can do that. Obviously different colors, but look what one person does. Would this picture get in pop without that? No. But again, one person reflecting makes all the difference in the world as far as looking at a picture and evaluating. Here's one. Remember we talked about the weather of the water? Perfect exposure. You can't do anything about that. And that's okay. It's, it's round. And that's okay to burn out the sun. The halo compensates and the, the sky. The little lone car and the flock of seagulls overhead makes for again a story, a very interesting picture. If you're a gator fan, you got you got a picture for your wall. You know, it's, uh, you can sell this probably down at the UF anytime. But this is what I'm talking about. They got the exposure right so that you can see the, the ripples and the waves through the bottom. Sorry, I'm getting tired of this yet. No. Um, we take, everybody's got these pictures. And that's good. It, it's well done, you know, framing, uh, leading you back, the light leads you back. Again, I think if you, drop a couple people in there, it makes it more interesting. Uh, if it were a ghost or somebody in pure uniform, it would really make it interesting. But to me, if you're going to do this, especially here in Pensacola, everybody has pictures like this. So when a judge sees it, oh, it's another Fort Pickens River picture. You know? So you want to do something different. Uh, Nice, night picture. All I did was straighten it. It's so subtle, you probably won't really even see the difference, but it's slightly straightened. You can see by straightening, you, you lose a little bit. Here's what I like. Uh, I love the perspective, the colors. It's sharp from front to back. You've got people you can relate to. Uh, a trio walking up the street. Uh, very well done. This is a good part and an ugly part, right? A beautiful part here, incredible view. Love to have that camera, but surrounding it is nothing but ugliness. So it ruins the picture. Well, what do you do? Well, you can tell those people get the hell out of my picture. Go move your car, because um, I doubt you can move it. But maybe you could. Uh, maybe you could wait. Now you can manipulate it. You know, I did this very quickly, so don't hold me to it. There's some crooked edges, but. You see what I'm saying? This is such a wonderful image. The perspective is perfect. Uh, that Cadillac just looking in the face with the eyeballs. And uh, this is one I would definitely love to would do in, in black and, and 
frame it in a white or silver frame. And, uh, it's, it's just very well done, but you, again, you have to think about this as a picture itself, it doesn't get in top. Uh, it's just something to remember. I always want to add people, but there's times you got to take them out, and these people don't add anything to that story. <coughs> this one really threw me. I don't know what this is. <laughs> it's, it's strange. Uh, the rocks looking like this and the colors, I don't know. If is it over processed? Is it just a weird formation? What I do like about it is the fact that there's a car. Now it's too bad it's not bigger, but the idea is there. Putting something in as perspective uh, with this. So I've got to show you a few pictures from Death Valley that demonstrate what I've been talking about. If any of you have been to Death Valley, I know the journey has just got back. It's it's mind boggling like most state parks. And so your eye sees these incredible vistas and you just want to capture them. And then you look at your pictures and you're disappointed because you can't quite capture it all. Or you take what you see as a beautiful scene, but there's something about it that just doesn't pop, it just doesn't speak. And Death Valley is a challenge for that. Unbelievable scenery. But my idea is you've got to have more than that. Here's that idea that I was talking about, just as that former picture. The, the S-shaped road, which I love, is a little bit, you know, you can miss it, but wait for a car to come. And that's, you sit up here and, and wait. Cars come through. Uh, and you wait for a car. Now, I wish it were a red convertible with blonde in it, but <laughs> I didn't have that much time. But you see, it just adds an element. You've got this unbelievable formations, but just this adds something to it. Here's, uh, again, I, I sent it to Alabama Hills. Uh, they missed it the first time, Jernigan's. This is in Alabama Hills. It's in it's north of Death Valley. If you ever get a chance to go there, it's incredible rock formations, arches, looking at the sea, through the arch to the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Very unusual. Again, Without this, there's no perspective. Uh, but to have this stark white uh, uh, RV equipment sitting here, make, to me, makes the picture uh, amidst this incredible force of nature, these amazing rocks. It, and none of these people do I know, by the way. I, you just wait. Uh, I was lucky. I was sitting here waiting, and a guy comes up with an attractive girl, and he tells me to go down on the rock, and she starts posing for him. So I just got behind him. <laughs> my, my lens is longer than his lens. <laughs> uh, and you wait. And again, it's great scenery, but she makes it. Her colors make it pop. Uh, it adds a human element. It adds an element of interest. Again, I don't know who that is, but I just waited. I saw him up there and he started walking and you wait till he gets to the, the right point. Uh, and again, peering over, it gives you a sense of depth. Uh, this is early in the morning. It was frigid out. These two young ladies took the uh, comforters off their ho hotel room bed and wrapped themselves in it. They had this wonderful design uh, standing there. And then even when you make it in black and white, I love the pattern compared to the, the natural patterns below. Uh, again, I just think without them, it's a totally different effect of the picture. Not, here's somebody walking, uh, but just his footprints. And then you can finally follow to this very small character. And yes, it's beautiful, but again, it's a without the footprints, I don't think it works. Looks like they're carrying a tripod. He is a camera. Yes, everybody there is taking pictures. Here was a hiker. I, we actually were sitting up on a hill resting, and it wasn't real crowded. And all of a sudden, I see this guy start to hike. So you get ready. And when he's in the right spot, you take the picture. Uh, and it, again, puts everything in perspective. That same idea. Again move around so that the, the photographer is in front of the lighter area, not lost in the shadows. Uh, but to me, it makes Death Valley seem more real. Uh, sunsets, 
uh, I sat on the bench. I was worn out. It's basically that's why I sat on the bench. And that did me in that day of hiking. But, and I'm sitting there watching the sunset, and all of a sudden, over the ridge come groups of people. Hey, friends, I took this family and they walked around and they took the pack and came down to me. So I went over and I said, Can I show you your picture? And it turns out they were Germans. And they came to pick up their two daughters who were in college here. And so they stayed. She was in California, I think, in college. And they had two other children and they, they, they loved the picture. And I said, uh, You know, would you like a copy? And they said, Oh, we would love it. We don't have any pictures. You know, the girls here in America. And so uh, they gave me their email, and I sent them this. And I got a great thank you note from them when they got the picture. So you know, you, you meet people that way. They love looking at their picture and show it to them. This is not the picture I took, but I'll show you because if I did just this, you have no idea about what we're looking at. But you see, there's a set of footprints here, and so I watched these people come until they got to the bottom. You want to see how big that sand is? So you can't possibly understand that without them. Just figures. Nice separated, nice enough colors that it, it made it pop. It makes the photograph. Okay, that's it. Very good. Questions, comments? How much can you edit these photos for uh, somebody uh, like taking that that Cadillac taking the picture black? Yeah. Oh, I I think I'd be part. You could you could certainly enter it in digital dark. I would have no problem with you entering that in transportation. Everybody knows in that picture that you edited the background. You're not trying to fool anybody. And the category is transportation, and there is one of the ultimate vehicles. So, as it, if I were the judge, I would judge that without any markdown. If it was in transportation, certainly in digital darkroom, you could do anything you want, but I would put it in transportation. How about the shoes? Oh, absolutely. I don't think, or I think editing background like that, there's nothing wrong with it. What category? Um, category? Uh, I put that in dirty shoes category. <laughs> Still life, uh, open category. You know, transportation is that category. Uh, you could. But again, this, this business of how much you have. Again, think about the rules. It's whatever you do looks natural, isn't going to just. As soon as it comes up, the judge says, Oh my god, they were processed. Of course, you're not going to get any further. But if it looks natural, if the colors are natural, and you're doing light landscapes, uh, you know, again, don't replace the sky if you're going to add a landscape contrast. It's just, it's, it's so most every landscaper is truly a professional photographer. I mean, that's like, you don't do that. Uh, so, that's the one rule, but as far as you know, tweaking the colors, it's, if you're shooting raw, you have to. You have to affect the saturation a bit, and you have to, to, to deal with that a little bit. But that's the skill of learning editing where you do it. I'm sure that picture of Dick, you, know, you edited that night scene, color-wise, the night, uh, the Tennessee. Yeah. yeah, but it was natural. I mean, it looked very natural. Uh, you not hesitate to put that in whatever category you wanted to, knowing that, yeah, it's probably popped a bit, tweaked a little bit. And, and I may not speak for all judges. There may be some purists. We had uh, one of our old Navy judges. Uh, I mean, he, he hated uh, uh, Photoshop. You know, he grew up taking combat pictures in the Navy. Of course, he never used that. Uh, you know, so you have to be cognizant of who's judging, and there will be judges who will be more strict about it. You know, you can't, it has to be straight out of the camera. We have never held that here at the club. And I don't think it's reasonable. Any other comments? The sun is not overexposing the sun, but you can have sun overexposing it. Well, it's hard not to have. Yeah. If, you, if it's a perfect circle, in my mind, that's okay. Now, the ones where it just it blows out and there's no distinct 
sun, I think that's a problem. But it's hard otherwise, especially when you, you can create a, you know, enough of it there's a halo around it and it blends in to the sky. Uh, that's the most you can do. Now, if you wait till sunset, no, you, sh you shouldn't have to have a blown out sun at sunset. Once it gets low enough in the sky, you ought to be able to correct for that exposure wise. But other than that, when it's up higher, there's not much else you can do. But the reflections that it creates, those things you have to make sure. Clouds are another problem. We see a lot of landscapes every year where the clouds are burned out, blown out. And that's, again, you're not going to get it in pop when that happens. Uh, so, you know, the grad, yeah, graduated filters I'm talking about, it's kind of an old time thing, but screw it on the front of your camera. The filters are rectangular, half of them have a filter, half of them are clear. You put it down to the horizon so that. From the horizon below, there's no filter. From the horizon up, there's a filter. That's the easiest way to just take a picture and get it done. Uh, as I said, you can otherwise you have to tone it down and then work with the darker areas and put it in sharper light. Yeah, I have no problem if it's a good HDR. I, I think the judges have gotten much more lenient. Than, you know, we used to have, maybe you still do, because you have an HDR category this year. Yeah, I don't think you ought to. I think it goes the way with the cell phones. <laughs> yeah, we don't have HDR. It's abstract, it's for dark rooms. Well, I don't think you need to do that either. Again, if it's realistic, what is HDR? It allows you to see We don't see have a separate HDR. Your eyes. We see an HDR. I mean, if I took a picture now and not just right here, it would not look at all like what I'm seeing all the way back as far as sharpness and shadows. So I, I don't think HDR should be uh, a drawback as long as it's done well. It's not over processed, over pop. Just a way to bring out, to smooth out shadows and light areas and to bring a little sharpness to detail, I think it's fine. Do you, uh, do you instruct the judges to mark down if it's HDR other than what have we been doing for the last couple of years? Well, we've been leaving it up to their judgment more than anything, but yeah. there's not an HDR category. I mean, yeah. obviously, if something's blown true. out. Yeah. The early HDR, you know, was difficult. Crunchy that, looking. What they have now is you can make it so subtle. You can still get the benefits, but it's very subtle. Uh, and I think it's worth doing. And, and I agree. It's, it's, it went the way of the cell phone category. And really, black and white's a specialty, but black and white isn't a separate category. Right. It could a, be. It could be, but it's a spe it is a specialty. But I mean, right. a good photo, right. black and white's good photo in yeah. any category. You, yeah, we've talked about that a lot. When, since you can submit a black and white in any category, but you could, you might want to try some years having a particular black and white category. Let's do the raffle here. We've got the tickets. Thank you, guys. Can you read the Eight eight one. Eight eight. And I have eight eight two. Uh, Goodbye, everybody. Uh, eight six nine. Eight six nine. There you go. Eight eight zero.